Hey guys, so this video is going to go over my male picks for the 2020 IFBB season. The format is almost the same as my female video, except I replaced sportsmanship with the most inspirational. Given my current gender, I struggle to pick a female inspirational to aspire to. I found these awards harder to pick, so they'll probably be more controversial as well. So here are my male picks for the following categories. Pro Debut, Best Comeback, Most Determined, Best Division Swap, most conditioned, most improvement, most inspirational, and finally the most dominant. Starting things off, we have Hunter Labrada winning the best pro debut. This award is always going to be unpredictable for the men, as open guys often take a couple years off after winning their pro card because they are not ready for the IFBB. And that's what made Hunter a shoe in here. For a men's open guy to win their first pro show is simply remarkable. Yes, his father did the same back in the 80s, but this achievement has become exceedingly difficult as the standard has elevated to be much higher. Consider that he weighs roughly 50 pounds heavier than his father, and many feel he has the better structure. Hunter is probably the only certainty to be a star in the next generation, and I only say that based on his potential and how short his career has been. Best comeback goes unanimously to Big Rami. Pretty much everyone outside his camp was skeptical he could pull this off, myself included. This was someone people were arguing didn't even belong in the 2020 Olympia. For the record, I wasn't in that camp, as I felt sending the top three from the European pro, but only the winner of the Arnold Classic wouldn't be fair and even detract from the prestige of the event. But you know Phil had to be grateful he didn't have this version of Raimi showing up during his reign, and a lot of people didn't seem to realize how hard it is for a guy this big to come in this conditioned. Take Ronnie, who had the craziest work ethic we've ever seen in bodybuilding and still managed to come in off a few times during his reign. The most determined award is kind of a crapshoot because a lot of the competitors' lives and preps are kept pretty private. But I don't think anyone received more backlash online than Ian Valier. Some of it might have been self-inflicted, but it got bad enough for him to deactivate his Instagram during the Tampa Pro, which he went on to lose. But he didn't let the noise bother him enough to throw in the towel, and the scrutiny only grew worse after he won the New York Pro as many didn't believe he deserved it. But he redeemed himself unequivocally by placing 7th at the Olympia. What everyone has to respect here, including his detractors, is that he brought perhaps the best possible package he could given his current size. And you can't say that for many of the fan favorites. The best swap award goes to who made the most seamless transition to another division. George Peterson's entrance to the 212 division had a lot of hype, and he definitely delivered upon it. The only reason he finished third at the O was El Gargni and El Clarita were both at their all-time bests. Had he showed up last year looking like this, he would have been battling El Gargni for the title. And he's in a very good position going forward as he's actually one of the younger 212 guys, but he's not a lock to be the future champion as he's a couple inches taller than the norm with long legs, so they could prove a liability for him going forward. So the most improved award is pretty similar to the biggest comeback, except it doesn't consider people who have placed well in the past. Everybody was expecting Labrada to be the new face in the top six, but it was actually Akeem Williams who was there when the smoke cleared, and many felt he should have placed higher than sixth place. He managed to fall off everybody's radar until he won in Chicago, as it took him five years to win a pro show. 
in retrospect, this shouldn't have been as shocking as it was, as this is a huge power lifter with a crazy dense structure that simply needed to nail his conditioning. And to be honest, he has been criminally underrated until now. How high his ceiling is is still up in the air, as his high lats and thick skin could be the only thing in the way of a title. So the most peeled award was one of the harder picks to make for the men. I didn't consider the physique or classic guys because it would just become too hard as they are pretty much required to come in absolutely shredded or they fall precipitously in their placings. Ian Valier, Big Ramey, Sean Clarita, and Kamal El Gargney were all considered. The determining factor I went with was who would probably never replicate this conditioning again and that's why I ended up going with Clarita. But I'm not sure this is his peak, as he still has room to grow in his weight class. Forty-nine years old, and people are marveling at Tom Brady's recent Super Bowl victory at 43. This guy's pro career was just getting started then. El Gargney should serve as a testament to anyone who feels that they are too old, tired, or worn down to make improvements at the gym. Yes, he has some of the best genetics on the planet, but his mental drive to hang with these younger guys shouldn't be overlooked. The craziest thing from last year was that he was able to make improvements from the prior year. Going forward, one must ask an almost implausible question. Can he peak at 50 years old? The most dominant is pretty much the Bodybuilder of the Year award. I felt it would be less subjective by naming it this way. This one was pretty easy as well, as it was pretty much lights out as soon as it dawned on people that Chris Bumstead brought his back up while staying under the weight limit, which I don't think we'll ever really understand completely. I considered him for the most improved award as well, but since his placings couldn't really improve from last year, I went with the Keem there. And while it's hard to see him losing in the near future given his age, people should take a note from women's physique. The smaller streamlined divisions require the champions to come in nearly perfect every year because you don't see the size disparities you see in the bigger divisions. So yeah, don't expect him to remain this dominant in the future as there's a lot of very hungry and very young guys coming for him. So that is tentatively my last video covering the 2020 IFBB season. Next up, I'm going to cover my picks for the newcomers most likely to make an impact in 2021. While there's nothing going on right now contest-wise, once the season gets here, it's going to be a tsunami with everything scrunched together. I don't want to give up on my mail coverage just yet, so help me out if you enjoyed this video by either hitting the like, subscribe, or the little bell thingy. So until next time everyone, stay safe and thanks for watching.